Good morning, and once again, we we'll say Happy New Year to you, and thanks for joining us again on Summit, this uh, 6th day of January 2020. My name is Jumoke Michaels. You're welcome. Banji, yeah, good Jumoke, to be here again. How you're coping with the hammer With the weather. <laughs> For me, I'm, I'm just struggling. Me, I'm an aboki. I'm, I'm struggling to actually uh, cope. Well, how the world has become a global village, of course, has always been. But the tension between U.S. and uh, and uh, Iran is actually blowing across the world. And uh, for us in this country, the IG, as the Inspector General of Police, has actually put the police on alert. Um, in case of any eventualities, we just pray that sanity would actually go back to those two countries and then uh, they will try as much as possible prevent the third world war that's uh, well, we pray we pray it doesn't just happen we cannot afford a third world war. Mm -hmm. my name my name is banji busari it's summit yes today on summit um, we are actually looking at um year 2020 expected role of women in national development because um recently some women got um recognition uh world recognition in um national development and um, economic issues. We have the emergence of Dr. Mrs. Arika Nakwe as the Guardian 2019 Personality of the Year. And we also had, um, have statistics uh, which shows that in Ghana, Botswana and Uganda, women are the topmost in business and investment. So we want to look at the role of women globally and then also in Nigeria, especially in this year 2020. And we have a woman here with us in the studio who is uh, a trailblazer when it comes to politics and economy. And um, joining us this morning, we are so happy to have um, Honorable Mrs. Falashade Olaban Gioba. She's the Deputy Chairman, Association of Local Government Vice Chairman of Nigeria. And she's also a politician and a businesswoman. You're welcome. Thank you. Good, Good to have you join us. Nice to be here. You're welcome. Happy New Year, everyone. Same to you here. Yes, <laughs> As a matter of fact, for me, it's also an opportunity for us to reawaken the, the spirit of the affirmative action. That's the 35 percent women uh, inclusion, inclusion in yes. government. Yes. Um, this was something that actually took place a couple of decades ago. And uh, this is 2020, that's the uh, year 2020. Um, women have always uh, uh, said they marginalized, uh, denied opportunities, subjugated, oppressed, and uh, so much more, uh, giving an impression that the men have always been dominating. Do you agree to that, 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 that perception that women have remained the oppressed, the weak, and the disadvantaged? I have heard that, but not necessarily agree that the, the weak or a disadvantaged were. You know, the, the, the narratives have been there, but definitely they're changing. And um, we're saying to everyone, the gap needs to be bridged. Um, uh, the numbers are not encouraging when you talk about equality and all that. But right now, we're more for the equal opportunities, knowing that um, in the past, a lot of women have not had the same equal opportunity as our men. But truth be told, um, we're talking dialogue, you know, education, sensitizing, and the narratives definitely, I think, are changing for the better for us women. So how close are you to achieving the 35% uh, affirmative uh, action? Well, um, I think if you know that that 35% uh, was how many decades ago? So really, um, I think we need to shift that percentage now to more like 40 or 50 instead of being stuck in 35. Um, change is one thing that we all know is constant. Um, and so uh, based on our numbers and all that, I think we need to walk towards um, um, higher numbers. But they say that um, every politics is local. I want to talk about my state, Lagos State, uh, celebrate my governor. Because um, Lagos State Cabinet, we have like 32% uh, 
as we speak. Yes, yes. Um, and so, but like we say, Lagos leads all those states follow as center of excellence. So more people need to... Maybe in debt too. Profile. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that, sir. Um, the thing is, uh, Lagos is like no other state. And um, that culture of excellence that we have, I think more women are being recognized also in the states. A lot is being put into actually making it a more enabled and flourishing ground. For Would more. you say the same thing of the head federal level? As uh, uh, President Mohamed Buhari also gone close to achieving the 35 percent uh, affirmative action. Well, um, a same party. The statistics for us women is that we must occupy our place. You cannot give what you don't have. If more women are not being encouraged to actually participate, to actually occupy their place, then you don't have so much choices. If you're not there, you can't be called from your house. You know, like my leader would always say, um, power is not served a la carte. Some women are not ready to take the chances. Some men are not ready to also allow their sisters, their family members to, you know, because they think one thing or the other. But really, really, we all need to take charge. Um, the future is now. And with all that is going on in the world, rather than just putting all the blame somewhere else and thinking magic is going to happen, we're meant to um, collaborate with government, you know, with your community, um, volunteer, actually be in charge more to where you're adding value to anywhere that you're being called. Very important. All right, um, I just mentioned some countries now where uh, women have been rated to be topmost in business and investment, and they are African countries. That's uh, Ghana, Botswana, and Uganda. All right, now women have uh, taken the topmost place. What do you think these countries are doing differently uh, where women are emerging? They are being showcased. They are allowed to, to portray what they have, the strength in them. What is, what are they doing differently that um, is hampering, should I no, use the word you, hampering you, you, women? You took, yeah. you took the word from mm. my mouth and that mm. is emerging, mm. okay? And um, I want to still celebrate the Nigerian women. Whether um, they're giving us all the accolades or not, I think the Nigerian women truly needs to be celebrated. Um, in all those neighborhoods, that you have talked about and talking those countries um, some other things might be different from what we have here but I I would still say they're still trailblazing after Nigeria I am not saying this because I'm just being patriotic okay mm -hmm. but Nigeria we've got so much to be celebrated you know on and the good things that are working but most times we tend to condemn mm. um, we always feel the grass is greener somewhere else not realizing that somebody somewhere is also watching that grass so we need to have a bit more um, confidence I mean if you're talking about women, I, I will celebrate my mother okay um, she wasn't literate she wasn't you know but hard worker a woman of integrity who believed that you know what you can be a man you can be a woman but what is most important be the very best of you and as a little girl would always encourage me and say it doesn't matter that you're a girl convince your dad because my dad was one of those men back in the days who believed that you know a woman was supposed to be at home a woman was not supposed to you know outspoken as outs yeah you know and i'm glad that before he passed you know he would say you i could really say you're 10 men in one day. i love and adore my dad i miss him tremendously but most times 
women have to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. You have to do twice as much or even three times as much to be able to even have the same recognition mm -hmm. as a male counterpart. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I know that uh, over time, each generation has actually produced its own heroes or heroines. And uh, that's why we have the Madame Chino Bruce. Yes. Or this one, we have the... Of blessed uh, of memory. blessed memory. Yes. We have uh, uh, Madame uh, Rasom Kuti. Yes. Um, yes. Um, we had the, the Amina. Yes, Queen Amina. Amina. Yes. We had the Mary Mies of uh, this world and yes. all that. Now, talking about bringing down to our generation now. Yes. Well, I mean, you could say the, those are actually championing the cause of, of women or yes. get child education and yes. all that yes. are the heroes of our time. Talking about OB, the question is, yes. that's, uh, and some others. I mean, yes. the list is very long. Now, what parameters do you think for our generation would actually make women to be seen, to be up and being seen, ranking, I mean, the way they should amongst men or amongst their contemporaries? Is it in terms of education or wealth or maybe in terms of courage to actually uh, come out come you know, out you and know. then uh, speak for their people? What's the parameter? What are the things that well, you Well, uh, speaking is one, but actually it's all about action. It's all about adding value. It's accountability, responsibility. Whether somebody is watching you or they're not watching you, it's being the very best of you, even as a mother, as a teacher, as a mentor, wherever you are, be the best of you. And you know, the world is interdependent on one another. It's not just... Um, uh, be, I mean, how many people do we have in the in House of Assembly or National Assembly or, uh, you know? So everybody matters. Everybody is just as important. And wherever you are, civil servants, you know, doctors, wherever you are, be the very best representation of you as a woman. Occupy your, you know, we're born natural, you know, naturals. We, we got the heart. When a woman dedicates, you know, to do something, most times the nation, we're nation builders, the nation benefits from it. And so, um, wherever you're being called, you must be the very best of you. And when people say it's money, it's whatever, money, it's important, but for me, Value adding is very, very important. The, the people around you, um, let them be able to say, because you're there, we're able to achieve more. You will see the bigger picture, you know, make it a more enabled one for, you know, people around us. And think of the successor generation very also you know very important also because that is the only time you can really say you have given your best you must leave this earth better than you met it somebody created i mean we're here you talked about those women i'm sure those women as at the time had it rough somewhat but today some of us are enjoying the benefits of whatever it is that they did and so also you pass it on Make sure you um, mentor coming generations, you know, be concerned that some other people would also benefit that Nigeria would truly be greater someday. It's a numbers game. All right. I'm um, still uh, trying to still buttress on the question that uh, Banji just asked. You know, uh, Nigeria is a very peculiar, our political terrain is very, a very peculiar one. Mm. Uh, f someone looking from outside will have the impression that it's a man's world, really. Uh, and then maybe is that why we have fewer women uh, volunteering to get involved with politics? Oh, I, you know, I really wanted to throw some light in that regard because it's still the same question he asked. But um, I don't know. Well, we need to really pay no that out. Um, yeah, in fact, well, actually, do my please yeah. permit me? The talk of 2023 is already is always yeah. the guy, is hovering in the air. Everybody has started talking about it. 
not even a single mention of a woman. Mm. Whereas we have had about five names. Those who are actually in 2023. Is it, is it timidity or that uh, you think you do not have it to be able to get there? We're not, not there. We're not there yet. Yet. You you not there. For, exactly. You for we're, vice not, we're not there yet. We're on our way there. No, you settle for vice chairmanship. No, no. Um, it's, you don't call it settle. It's an elective office. Okay. Um, uh, it takes much more than just being a woman. Mm. For you to qualify uh -huh. for an office, no, I think it's like it is, talk yeah, talk. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is, it is merit, mm. and every party has its own, um, what I call policies and all that. I want to say my party, the, it's it's gender friendly, mm. they're there, but you know what? Some women are not like. Confident enough to come out to come out and participate. They feel limited. They feel so many things does not um, encourage them. A lot of them feel it's all finance. And I and I'm saying this because I go around also now. We talk to the youths. We talk to um, the women and all that. Encourage one another. You know, let's know. Were you financed to get this far? <laughs> um, the party uh, uh, financed to get the. I mean, support. No, of, co of course, the party. One, uh, Godfather or something. Oh my we're God! Bringing out the money. Oh my God! No, no, the party. Oh, oh, the party is supreme. You cannot do anything independent of the party. Like you, it's it's a it's it's a structure. It's a platform. Okay, so before you say you want to do anything you know the needs of your community you check which party best interprets what you're trying to do for me from day one um, as a progressive I'm sold out on my party so now and then your antecedents you don't just wake up one day and say you want to be president of a country what have you been doing How have you I mean for us in 2015, it was easy for us to come in with a nomination of our president then because the integrity work, okay, a lot of things. So you must, you must have built yourself somewhat to an extent to where people can trust you with their vote. It's democracy. People can trust you with their vote. Now, they talk about um, Godfatherism and all that. You cannot be a leader without having been a good follower at some point. Is that why most of women in all across the political party? You must have a leader. I thank God for sing. my leaders. No, 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 no. no, no. Sing, we they sing. dance, you follow them, and then they, at the end of the day, I also sing, I, I also sing and dance. Get There's nothing. At the end. No, no, no. You Women seem to be content with that. No, no, no. You know, um, people like to cheapen things and that's why i talk about the words and all that you know whatever you have whatever you do you must appreciate it before it can bless you if anybody comes and talks to me consident you know coincidentally that's because ah you just sing and clap and follow some leaders and I'll, I'll tell you thank you that's what you see but for me i'm learning you, you know you, you like i lived outside the country for quite a while. I needed to study the terrain. I needed to know how things work. I needed to, you know, so definitely I would align myself with people that know. You can't, you, you, you can't just get up and say you want to um, uh, challenge yourself. No, you must identify with the leader. So for me, even before we have the uh, federal, you know, I mean, in so many years when we're still just one party, I believed in the progressive, okay? And for me, I knew that whatever it takes, I would want to contribute my own quarter into um, building that great country called Nigeria. That's it. What? All right, yeah, I just want to announce that um, you could be part of this discussion.
by sending us an SMS to the number that will be displayed on the screen. We want you to share your thoughts with us on the issue of um, women development in national, uh, women participation in women development in uh, national, national development in year 2020. You can send us an SMS and then we'll read out your message. Please include your name and where you reside so that we can uh, read that out. We have the, okay, you wanted to ask a question. Yeah, talking about national development, um, I would like to take it from the viewpoint that uh, Jumoke in our intro mentioned one Dr. Arikana. Yes. Uh, not a Nigerian, but she's married to a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's actually the, person, the Guardian Newspaper's personality of the year, 2019. And how did she emerge? The, the, the singular factor of her over time, she's been identified as a personality very courageous and always uh, speaking for the uh, masses, that's uh, the voiceless. But the particular incident that actually got her the award was the fact that she courageously confronted the world powers, that they are responsible for the underdevelopment of Africa. Mm. And not too many, we don't always see Nigerian women coming out to challenge the government, our government, uh, maybe because of the political affiliation or some other factors, you always seem most of the time to accept what goes. And it's not too often that you see women coming out to challenge policies of government in terms of national development and the direction government should take to actually lift us maybe out of poverty or maybe fight the illiteracy and some other things that have kept us in the background. Why is it that women like to take a back row? Women activists. You, 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 you are the one that is saying that. You talked about activities. We have, we have, we have a lot of women activists in really? this country. A lot, yeah. Talk about the activities. Yes. Yeah, they, I mean, they talk. But talking and talking does not just get you anywhere. If nothing is wrong or nothing, you know, definitely, why would you just... But what is important is wherever you see there is a need, there is always a woman with a heart catering to that need. Now, whether you accept it or you don't accept it, you know, like now, you already pushed us all to one corner. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's just asking. You have assumed, you have concluded. Or maybe you that, have done it in the past. No. Originally challenged the status quo. Maybe in the past, have you, have you done Well, that? well, in, in, before the, the, pre, the previous government, I did talk about all the excesses that we were having then. And, you know, I was part of the campaign and all that. I said that we needed to change. When we were campaigning for corruption, the word was, if we didn't get rid of it, it could get rid of Nigeria. So some things, yes, you would talk about because you knew that it was not sustainable. And no matter what, you wanted to be part of that positive change, change agents, change makers, whatever it is, as a progressive. That's what I Have we know. made the change, uh, the change, of course? We're not there, but we are very much on the way there. Are you satisfied? Satisfied? We're not there yet. We're, it's very much a work in progress. It is not something that only one person can do. It is something that... You know, uh, our vice president, the president talked about a new tribe of Nigerians. Not because you speak one dialect or you speak another dialect, but truly, truly Nigerian that believe in this great country, Nigeria, that prioritizes Nigeria above everything else. And that is the new order. That is the new kind of Nigeria we all need to build. So satisfaction, we're not there yet. It's a work in progress. But together, we will build that great country called Nigeria. Please, like I said earlier, what we want is for you to send us an SMS. People are calling. Please just send us an SMS and we'll read out your message. I appreciate you for calling, trying to call. But please, what we want is an SMS. All right, still talking about the Guardian report for 2019. It listed the names of some women to watch out for. Okay. In Nigeria for 2020, people like uh, Aisha Buhari, uh, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, uh, Falasha Deso, Hadiza Balaribe, that's the vice uh, uh, deputy governor, Kaduna State, uh, Ulure Mitinubu, so many of them, Aisha Yesufu, mm -hmm. you know, at least uh, the whole number. 
I do see your name <laughs> someday, very soon. Yeah. Someday. Yeah, but you know, um, uh, 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 on, a, on, a, on, a, on a real note, um, some of those names that are there, they're really, really supposed to be celebrated. I mean, to be what? Celebrated. Okay. Okay. Um, so many unknown and unseen heroes, yes, you, you know, I'm talking women, but the names, you know, our, f our first lady, um, Aisha Bari, Her Excellency, you know, she has stood out like any other first lady, like we've never really had. You know, to say that I've got you guys as a mother of the nation, you know, she went through, you know, all, above protocols. And so for me, she's somebody close to my heart. And then we talked about uh, most distinguished senator, Oluremi Tinumbo. I'm talking back home now, okay? Um, she's also, I mean, a tribal is a, somebody that gently you will know that the force at which she's operating, it's really like on the grassroots level, she's somebody addicted to the people, somebody that truly cares. Um, Balarabe. Balarabe. Yeah, you know? So these are women that really... Balarabe, when I talk about the Northern Zone, it's not the norm for women to really stand up. You know, we've got everybody with cultural baggages and, you know, all those things that kind of limits, you know? But so the ones that come out, and I, I, I our Emia in Kano almost got himself into, you know, because he was also talking about the need to empower women, the need to educate the girl child, the need to not quickly rush and get a, a girl married at eight or nine years, mm -hmm. you know, that we complain about the future of this country. But you marry a girl off at eight years, what do you expect of her? You can't give what you don't have. And then she's having kids, her life is endangered, so many things. And then those children, most likely they're not going to be, in, you know, educated. And they are the ones that are going to come out later and be problems in the society. It becomes the Nigerian problems. So the education is also very important. So for me, I, I, I would say that's a plus plus, you know, that's a good one. On All right, I have one to... message here. Let me just read it so that I can respond to it. Maybe it will encourage those who are making calls to just send us their own messages too. Yes. So I have this message from Adedoku Juliet. She's uh, sending the message from, um, she said, OAU Ileife. She said, with self-confidence and 100% courage, if allowed, women can also contribute positively their own quota to the development of our nation. Um, all that we need is to get women of action and not women of I can do it. So I hereby advise fellow women to please take up the challenge courageously. Thanks. Women of action to women I can do it. That's women yeah. who can walk the talk. Yes, walk the talk. It's not just yeah. about saying, you know, but actually get up and do it. You can say you want to plan something forever, but don't be afraid. Baby steps, no matter how, get into it. If you make a mistake, you correct it again. Are you talk talking about starting from the grassroots? Starting from... At whatever level, just start. Just do it. Okay? It's important because if you... If you they said the journey of the thousand miles starts with just one step. If you don't do it, then you won't be closer to it. You talked about satisfaction. You can't be satisfied until you get to the, to the peak. But then, at some point, you want to be like, we're truly progressing. We're making heads way. And, you know, it's a numbers game. It, you must raise, more, raise more, more foot soldiers that have the same like minds, the same perspectives, that really believe in this great project called Nigeria. And together, you know, now, we are, we are aware globally, I mean, in Nigeria, we've had our celebrities too, in terms of success, that's uh, Mrs. Alakija, is reputed to be the world's richest woman, and she's a Nigerian. Now, do you think amongst women, there's enough galvanization? Do you galvanize yourselves enough in terms of support, in terms of actually raising your class, 
women support for women? It's you not. Think we have it's enough not. In, it's not enough. So what's why? What well, the, the 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 thing now. That's why I said we're changing the narratives. It's not enough. That's why you have more women organizations now actually going all out, even to secondary schools, to saying that you know the earlier we get them excited, we get them interested, we let them know that it is important the relevance, the importance of education in being concerned about their community, rather than just condemning, oh, Nigeria is not this, and you know, what can you do for Nigeria? Can Nigeria be proud of you? Do you really love this country? These are the ways you can contribute your, your own quota, and together we'll build that, you know, the, the reality, the, 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 the Nigeria of our dreams. So, it, it's not enough, just like I said, but being there, getting more people to be like in every community, you have somebody that is a change maker, a change agent, that is ready to, you know, do the drive, okay? And um, I think it, it will make a lot of difference. Yeah, I would like you to make yourself as um, a kind of case study for, for women survivor in the political space, mm -hmm. even in the economic space. Yes, very well. Women survivor. Using yourself as a case study, how is the experience and how are you getting by? Because I'm sure that it will encourage someone who is listening. Well, as a vice chairman of, uh, the, local government of the, na the national level. As a vice chairperson. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. it takes daily Women survivor. Okay. But one thing is resolution, hmm. commitment to your mandate. For me, it's not about me. Most times, I don't remember the me, me. I see the bigger picture, the people that have entrusted me with much more to serve. And so, no matter how I feel, no matter how it is, I keep going because I know they're counting on me. And so, yes, you're going to get, you know, the um, teething problems, the you know, or what's not, you know, sometimes, um, like no day, no two days are the same, okay? But same or not same, you must get the job done. You must be there to be that solution provider that you claim you want, you know? Everybody goes into politics for different reasons. For me, it's the people. It's a people project. The people must win. My people, our people, okay? So. I want to be able to say I did my best you know so what are those things that you did that actually brought you this far and maybe that's the yeah. and you, how, you, know, you know in today's Nigeria people talk about the economy that is so bad a lot of people have given up and all that but you irrespective of the challenges politically and economically you still look you're still, mm. you're still standing. I will. <laughs> I, I thank so God. You I, are, I, you, we want to see you as a symbol of a Nigerian woman, the doggest spirit to succeed. So what are the, what are those things? And and, uh, and 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 for me too, I am very much a, <laughs> a work in progress. Yes, okay. Uh, but but the important thing for me was, I I actually begged to be given the opportunity. Hmm. And that is the truth. You did not deserve it? I deserved it, but initially, when nobody knew me, okay, I, I was not... But you just spoke about proving yourself. No, oh, that's over. Right. You, have, you have to first... Vol For me, I first volunteered. Hmm. I first volunteered like, I'm available. I can do this. Give me the opportunity. And so, if you are not there, hmm. you can't... So, when you are not there... And they tell you be there at six o'clock and you are there at quarter to six or five thirty waiting. Okay. And probably hear me. That shows Yeah, that you. shows your passion, mm -hmm. your readiness to serve. And no matter what, you know, the doggedness comes with you actually being on the field to where you are given a task and you are actually able to perform the task, maybe close to expectations or even above Beyond. expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay, but first and foremost, you have to show up, dress up and show up, be available. And no matter what, have your mind that you know what, this is what I've committed myself to do. Be resolute on being the very best 
of you. And that's how it is for me. Is there any difference between a woman who actually wants to serve and uh, the woman who is there for personal gains? Is there any way you recognize these traits? <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I can talk for me. I wouldn't know. But um, I want to say that for most women that are, that are there participating, it is because they want to be there. It is because beyond it all, they are ready to serve. They're ready to give their all because it's not easy. It's not like um, kids glove what you, you know, like even you talk about elections, you know, and all that, you know. So, um, so many things, they said the unseen sometimes controls the scene, but so many things goes into it. And the fact that you stay grounded, you stay in it, shows that above it all, you must have the love of this great country at heart. Let's share your experience regarding you are an insider, so to speak. Um, what are those challenges that have actually, even when women may get there, some women have actually got to the top. Um, permit me to ask the recent incident of the head of service of the Federation who had challenges in office and then had had to uh, step, step aside, aside, so to speak. Now, what are those challenges that actually uh, confront women? I'm talking about women now in office that makes them maybe unable, I mean, uh, makes them unable to perform or maybe makes them to actually come down because a woman that's at the top is more or less a, a, a kind of a, a role model to millions. So when such a woman comes down, it means a lot, has a lot of negative impact. The case of the head of service was not something she wants to cheer about. So what are those challenges? I mean, the pitfalls that could be avoided when one gets there. Well, being at the top comes with its own challenges. Whether you are a man or you are a woman, the sustainability of being at that pace or getting higher comes with its own challenges every day. Like the ones that are peculiar to women. Uh, the, it, and that's why I said women, because you men tend to think we are the weaker sex and all that. And the numbers, you know, we don't have as much support because yeah. most times in the boardroom, you look at 50, you're probably going to have two women. And when you have to vote on issues or have to do something, you have more men. So most times you are voted out of the issue. So, but all in all, you are exposed to about the same thing. Now, the tenacity of purpose that you have as a woman keeps you a bit, you know, above because they are expected like you cry and you run away and, you know, you do that. But, you know, a woman, yes, you've got the heart. I've got my days. I've got my low moments. Yeah, but I can cry, but quickly, quickly, I put my pancakes you back recover. on. Yes, and I'm like, I'm here, and I've got a job to, to be done. And that's how it is. Okay, okay let me, yeah, I have, I have, I have, yeah, I have um, two, mm -hmm. some, two messages here. Mm -hmm. um, one, he did not include his name or where he's sending the message from, but he said uh, women have done well previously. Probably women who have been in governance yes. have done well. Yes. And then yeah. this person says, um, he's um, Anna Ayur Divine. He says, um, women can survive without being dependent. Mm. So... I guess he's also what talking the about, uh, the other person was saying that uh, women um, have done well previously. Okay. Probably that when women are given the chance or the opportunity, they always uh, excel. excel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're also <laughs> smiling, <laughs> meaning that there's hope for us women. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, Jumakia spoke about the excellence, that's uh, talking about women who have actually made it to the top in those three countries. Yeah. Uganda, Botswana, Botswana and Ghana. Ghana. Now, How about Rwanda? Rwanda was not mentioned. Rwanda, I mean, Uganda, statistics. Botswana uh, and Ghana the, were the, mentioned. The issue is uh, as a world most populous black African nation uh, with uh, women maybe uh, 60 percent. Mm. Uh, one would have expected that even Nigerian women um, 
it would also come to the top. I mean, in terms of business. Well, you can't depend on only one source. That's no, the data. No, 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 yeah. I, I, I just want to know yeah. your, the ease of doing business in Nigeria, for instance. Mm. What's your comment about it? And is it favorable to women? I, honestly, and, and that's what I'm saying, that there are so many programs now that has made it like prioritize women okay um the empowerment the trade you know all those things is to take care of our women the economic factor that women really are the ones at home raising this the children sending them to school and all that you know so there's a lot of things and the education even to adult um, literacy there's so many but if you don't know what is out there then you probably won't be able to tap into the, um, the benefits okay but there are so many um, loan programs you know cooperatives and all that that are women oriented even the banks there's so many pro you know uh, kind of things that they tender towards women especially the rates are obviously lower than the normal just because you want to make sure you get more women um, to participate in those programs um, the agricultural sector you've got the land uh, things that where you know women are more encouraged you know to lease land and go in the so the agricultural sector there's actually a big revolution now going on in the agri and a lot of it is being driven by the women I, I can tell you that categorically. All right, we, 2020 has ushered us into a new decade. You know, so we see it as um, a time to be refreshed, a time to think mm -hmm. deeper, and a time to uh, grab opportunities. Like you have said, that there are so many opportunities mm -hmm. that women can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, in this new decade, how do you, what picture do you really have of... Um, women participation when it comes to business, it comes to economy, it comes to politics, and the family. Hmm. Even I, across borders. Yeah, across, across borders. borders. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, just like our president talked about, um, this is the beginning of a new decade. Okay. Um, fresh minds, um, we needed to be more optimistic, positive minded, believe in this great country, this great project called Nigeria. And we all need to make ourselves accountable, responsible, wherever we are, to giving our very best. So it's a new decade. There's so much change going on all over the world. And when you talk about those sectors, you know, um, uh, the economy, challenges in the security side, the government is doing an awesome job in having that heads on but you see nobody's an island you, initially you were talked about you talked about what was going on in iraq but quickly quickly uh um cp ig, IG, IG. Uh, yeah you know we're raising the bars on there yes on the alert like you know because of what's going on on there we can have emotional uh people that can also take want to take advantage of that situation so that is what governance it's all about being sensitive to the needs trendy things so we didn't know that was going to happen but it's happening and quickly you have quick response to that so the same attitude is what the president is saying that we should be ready we should be prepared we should equip ourselves with all that it takes into the new emerging great country called nigeria i'm using her word now because it's one of my favorite words um, with Nigeria and and so he talked about the education uh, sector he talked about the health okay sector um, the farming sector and if we're able to get these things right uh, with us copying our excesses okay um, uh, before everybody believed you must eat imported rice and without that you know now we're buying our locally grown rice we're actually investing now into growing then the um, oil sector back then at christmas everybody had issues you will see people in kegs you know queues at the 
at the filling stations because the petrol was not available. Now, he also talked about the energy, which is really one of the heartbeats of the nation, that we needed to look into it. We've signed a lot of contracts, okay, with different, knowing that we needed the assistance with, like, the energy, um, the Germany and all that, you know, um, to make sure that the input goes up to where it can take care the of... The cost of time. Let, let me just ask this before we leave. Okay. You spoke about excesses. Yes. That's why I, I, I actually like to take your... Women are known. <laughs> why do you have to go there? No, women are known. And yes. there is part of the bill yes. of our development in this part of the Yes. Rather than rather invest in education or invest in productive areas, women prefer to go on the... Two hundred and fifty thousand. No, no, not anymore. No, no, that's that's not it's right. Not any no, no, that's not right. A woman would rather invest in her family now, the education of her children, the welfare of her family, knowing that the welfare of the family is the welfare of the nation. So the mindset, the orientation is different. So it's a different mind shift now for us mm. women. All right, thank you so much for thank being uh, discussing with um, Honorable Folasha De Olabanjioba. She's the Deputy Chairman, Association of Local Government Vice Chairman of Nigeria. And uh, it's been a delight uh, talking with you today. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. being a part of our program. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, sir. Sorry if I was a bit being hurt. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a man. I'll just do my job. <laughs> yeah. It's it's okay. Okay. All right. So we'll see you thank again you. on Wednesday for another edition of the program. I am Jumoke Michaels. Bye. And I'm Banji Busari. See you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.